Brothers and sisters, let me briefly share my testimony at this point of time. You know, I'm from India. I live in the city of Bangalore. I was born and brought up in a very orthodox Brahmin family. You know, Brahmins are the highest order in the Hindu religion, which is predominantly followed in India. I was born and brought up in a town called Chennai. That's my hometown. So being in a Brahmin family in the Hindu faith, spirituality was a part of our life. There was no need for me to search for God. And also parents brought me up very well. I had a good you know, upbringing. There was no near need for me to search for God. In this situation, when I finished my education, I came to the city of Bangalore in India to take up a job. I met a Catholic girl here and became friendly with her. When I say Catholic, they were Sunday Christians. Hardly any faith in God. So things were okay, working out for us. I was transferred to another town for about a year. When I came back, back to the city, this family had a renewal in their life. They were convinced and convicted that Jesus is the only Lord and Savior. So they were trying to convince me that Jesus is Lord and Savior. I had my own answers and defense for that. I said, I know your God. I know my God. You know, everybody is God. Everything is God. My God is also powerful. All these human ways of looking at it. Because Bible says only the Holy Spirit can convince us. Things are going on. Just a brief testimony of mine. In Bangalore, when I was staying in this town, I had a sickness called bronchitis asthma, a very severe case. The problem was so severe that I cannot, you know, be in a horizontal position. So to breathe normally, I have to be in a vertical position. Even to sleep in the night, I had to sit in a chair and sleep. Medical science did not help me. So I went trying out my own faith, serving other gods. Remember the word I used. You do this, you get this. You do this, you get that. You go shave your head, you get this. You dip yourself in this pond, you will be saved. So, so many things I had to do in my faith. But nothing really helped me. My situation was worse. When I said, even to sleep in the night, I had to sit in the chair and sleep. This problem was not for one night or two nights, brothers and sisters. I suffered from this for three and a half years. Imagine three and a half years, one person has to sit in the chair the whole night and sleep. Because of this, all my health parameters were failing. My job was in a mess. To make it very simple, everything around me was a mess. My life was in a confusion. Nothing could save me. Medical science could not help me. My faith could not save me. So I had no savior. Let's put it that way. You know, in this process, what happened was, the, towards the end of my testimony time, you know, last three months of this period, every night when I sit in the chair the whole night, you know, we doze off for some time. That's been my only sleep for the last three and a half years. Now, the last three months, every night when I'm dozing off for a few moments in the chair, I hear a voice as of somebody speaking to me. I'm a bachelor staying alone in a room. When I wake up, I don't see anybody. I know I'm hallucinating. I thought I was hallucinating, imagining. But the problem for me was even that little sleep was getting disturbed. And the only thought in my mind is rest, nothing else. And that is getting disturbed now. So I was very irritated. But what I was hearing was very clear. As of somebody speaking to me, every night the same voice, the same thing I'm hearing. It was only this I heard every night as if somebody is telling me Matthew 11 28 I wake up nobody's there what is this Matthew 11 28 I don't know because I've never even touched a Bible in my life you know one day when my mother-in-law was still not married then she casually asked me how is your sickness I told her all this you know, this voice and all and she told me God is speaking to you it's from the Bible and she gave me a Bible out of respite I took it I flung it in one corner in my room a few weeks later, when I had nothing else to do, one evening I thought, I saw this Bible. Now why not see what this Matthew 11, 28 is? So with great difficulty, I found out this Matthew 11:28, And it said, come to me and I'll give you rest. I was shocked. 
How does this person know what I need to rest? Who is this speaking to me? I've been hearing this voice. So all this running in my mind. I'm trying to analyze and find out. I randomly opened the Bible, you know, turned the Bible. The page was the chapter 3 of Hebrews. Verses 15 was actually highlighted there. It said, today if you listen to my voice, harden not your heart. I thought, whose voice? Who's speaking to me? How does this person know I need rest? All these thoughts are running in my mind. I started reading further. Verses 18 said, if you harden your heart, you will not enter my rest. I got scared. So the whole evening trying to analyze what happened to me. I became so tired, I went and lied flat on the floor. Believe me, brothers and sisters, for the first time in three and a half years, I slept the whole night without any disturbance. But when I got up in the morning, I was even more confused. My ego did not allow me to go and share this with these people. So one old man used to come to the house for prayer. I called him and told him this. He told me, came, he invited me to his house. He made me sit in front of the crucifix and he made me read Isaiah 53. When I read the first three verses, it said, he has no form of majesty, rejected by everyone. Nobody wants to look at his face. I also straight away looked at Jesus on the crucifix and said, I cannot accept him as my God. He is laying, hanging there helplessly. I could not accept him as a savior. But verses 4, 5, 6 was telling me, he is telling, give me your pain. I will take your pain. He was wounded for us. I said, how can this man do that? So I challenged that no, my old man. I said, uncle, I will find the truth. He told me only one thing. Yes, I want you to find the truth. But he told me, how are you going to find the truth? I said, I don't know. I will find it. Then he opened the Bible and he read from John 16. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you to all the truth. I said, I asked him, who is this Holy Spirit now? He told me, you know, he explained a little about the Holy Spirit that is not important. Now, who he told me, he will guide you into all the truth. I said, why do I need the Holy Spirit? I will find the truth. What big, you know, what big difficulty is that? Anyway, he said, I will pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. He put his hand over me and he prayed for an anointing of the Holy Spirit. And he said, Holy Spirit of God, you reveal the truth to this child of yours. I just you know, got prayed over, no reaction. I started searching for the truth. Now, how do I search for the truth? I went straight to my own scriptures. It's called the Vedas, the Hindu scriptures. When I opened it, I found a lot of things there contradicting what we were practicing. What is written there and what we are practicing is very different. I tried asking people. Every time I asked somebody, they will have a different answer. Nobody was clear about it. I want to know the truth now. There is a thirst in me to do the truth. I am very sure it was the Holy Spirit that gave me the thirst. Jesus said in John 7, 37, Is anybody is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And out of the believer's heart will flow rivers of living water. I knew this thirst was created in me. But the thirst led me to search and search in my scriptures. The more I search, the more uncertainties. I am not finding an answer. Confusion. You know, I thought my faith was very clear. But here is the confusion there. What to do? Suddenly I remembered this uncle telling me, this man telling me, you know, the Holy Spirit will guide you to the truth. I started praying, not with faith, but with the hope. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, I don't know who you are. If you are the truth, reveal the truth to me so that I may know the truth. I want to know the truth. I am not able to find it. Nobody is able to help me to find the truth. First of all, I don't know what is the truth. Can you help me? That's all I prayed. If you are truth, Holy Spirit of God, if you are true, lead me to the truth. That's when slowly through my own scriptures, I found a lot of truth leading towards Jesus Christ. Six, seven months. By the way, that healing was only for one night. Next day onwards, my sickness continued. I am still not able to sleep. But my thirst for knowing the truth increased. And I am trying to search a little bit of Bible reading I did. But frankly, I did not understand much. But through my own scriptures, six, seven months down the line, I came to know that Jesus is the only Savior. One or two points I will share with you, what my faith was telling. You know, we had many gods, many idols, many deities as you call it. But 
the Vedas were telling us, even my own scriptures were telling us that there is only one God. I had a question, if that is the truth, why are there so many gods? Even till today, nobody is able to answer that question. Then it also talks about certain things called as karma, as we call it in the Indian you know, faith. That is, every man has to face the consequence of what he has done. And I thought, if I have to face the consequence of what I have done, where is a savior for me? Then later I read there, it all happened over a period of time. I am making it brief for you. It says, uh, sacrifice can atone for sins. I found out people were offering animal sacrifice, this sacrifice, so many things. Then I understood, okay, what I'm doing is right. But one day I read in my own, you know, the spirit is leading me to the right places. It, it led me to read the passage where it says, no action of man, no sacrifice of man, nothing a man can ever do can save him. When I read this, I almost became an atheist. I thought if there's nobody to save me, why do I need a God? Forget about who is God now. That's when one day I read in my own scriptures that only the sacrifice of God can atone for the sins of a man. Wow. When I read it, I started searching for that God who has sacrificed himself for the sake of a human being. Believe me, brothers and sisters, I am not claiming to have searched in all the religions, but definitely some of the major religions in the world at least in our country, my country, India. Believe me, in no religion have I found a God who has sacrificed himself for the sake of a human being except my Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. That means even my own scriptures was revealing to me that Jesus is the Messiah. The Holy Spirit led me to understand from my scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. In fact, there are some points given in that Vedas to identify the sacrifice of God. How do you know the sacrifice of God? Some points are given there. It says he must be without blemish. He must be rejected by all. Suffer humiliation silently. Tied to a post. Both should not be broken. There should be a death sacrifice. He must come back to life. His flesh should be eaten by all the saints. These are some of the points given to identify the sacrifice of the Messiah. It says when you find all these points fulfilled in someone, he is the Messiah. Well, I find that all this was fulfilled only in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Spirit helped me to understand. The Holy Spirit guided me. The moment I prayed the Holy Spirit to lead me the truth, he led me through the truth. Not through the Bible. If he had led me through the Bible, I would have had my own doubts because I did not believe in that at that point. So he led me through my own scriptures. I had no excuse. In fact, I was convinced and convicted about it. Seven months down the line, I received what baptism in the church, Catholic Church. I was baptized in the Catholic Church, willingly. The day I was baptized, brothers and sisters, my sickness left me. It's about 20 years now. I have not got the sickness back even for a single day. Praise the Lord. Why? Jesus took it upon himself. He is my savior. He is my savior. You know, this is not the end of the story. You know, I got married in the Catholic Church to the same girl. Then, immediately after my marriage, I had to go back to my hometown and live with my parents. My job was, you know, took me there. Now, I had no... Um, matter in me to convince them about it. So the first few months our faith was all in secret. Again the Holy Spirit was prompting us constantly to go and speak about Jesus to my parents. You know, I did not have any scriptural knowledge to defend my faith. But anyway, the Spirit was inspiring us. So one fine day, mustering all the courage, went and told my parents that Jesus is God. You know, from that moment onwards, next six, seven years, we had to face a lot of persecution because of the, you know, conviction we had in Jesus Christ. A lot of difficulties. I'm not sharing all that now. What is important was I would have easily given up my faith because of the persecutions. But the Holy Spirit sustained me in my faith. 
That's why, brothers and sisters, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to be sustained in the faith in Jesus Christ. Now, people were watching us to make it very simple. You know, I had nothing, no words to convince them about Jesus Christ. No knowledge about the Bible at that point of time to convince them. We had only faith. And we prayed. The only thing we prayed, I prayed like this. Holy Spirit of God, it is you who convinced me about the truth that Jesus is the only Savior. Now, I have no words to use to convey this to them. But I pray the same anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon them. And the Spirit of God will convince them about the truth. That was our prayer. Prayers were answered. Six, seven years down the line. Slowly, one by one, many family members, relatives, friends. So many people started accepting Jesus Christ. Today, I have about 65 Orthodox families. That's about The number is more than 130. All, you know, accepted Jesus Christ as their only Lord and Savior. Many of them baptized too. How? How? Not because of any, you know, proclamation, preaching that we did. Not because of any signs and wonders like healing and deliverance. No. Simply because the Holy Spirit convicted them that there is salvation only in Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit that convinced them to the truth. Nothing else. It is the only the Spirit that lead us. Now we need to understand this, you know, to understand this part of it, how the Holy Spirit can convince us. Let me take to a little passage in the Bible. You know, we are all people of the new covenant. In the Old Testament, you see a lot of covenants made by God and each covenant was broken. Now, the new covenant was given in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Let me read it for you. Jeremiah chapter 31 was 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know your Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, understand this. The new covenant is nothing but the law written in the heart. And it says, God says, I will put my law within them. They will know me. Nobody needs to teach them. Now, in order for them to be convinced, anybody to be convinced that Jesus is God, the law has to be written in the heart. Now, how can the law be written in the heart? Jesus gave an answer for that. Jesus himself told the apostles in John chapter 14, verse 25 and 26. He said like this, I have said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Look at this, brothers and sisters. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you everything and he'll remind you everything. That means... If the law has to be written in the heart, Holy Spirit has to come into us. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's why at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, something important takes place there. We read that in John chapter 19 verse 34. Instead, John 19 34. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced the side with a spear and once blood and water came out. Remember, brothers and sisters, at the time of crucifixion, one of the soldiers, Longinus, he pierces the side of Jesus. Immediately, blood and water comes out. We know water indicates the Holy Spirit. When this water fell upon that soldier, Longinus, he received the healing for his eyes. And he claims out, indeed, this is the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, this man who was a party to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, who was ready to pierce Jesus Christ, is now crying out. This is the son of God. Within a fraction of a moment, what gave him the conviction that Jesus is the Lord and Savior? It is that water that fell upon him, the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm telling you, it's the Holy Spirit that can convict us that there is salvation only in Jesus Christ. This is the work of the Holy Spirit to convict you and me, convince you and me and sustaining us in the faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, that's why Peter, 
you know he was called to proclaim Jesus Christ he didn't have the courage but after the day of Pentecost you know on the first day he proclaims Jesus Christ and 3,000 people accept him a little later he goes to the temple with John and heals a lame person Acts 3 and he's brought before the council and questioned because of that we read in Acts chapter 4 Peter standing up addressed the crowds like this you Jews if you are questioning me today because of this man let it be known to you that this man is standing in good health because of the name of Jesus whom you crucified and there is salvation nobody else there is no other name given among heaven and earth among mortals by which we can be saved Acts 4 12 he says that no that day 5,000 people are you know converted how come 5,000 people were converted is it because of the proclamation of Peter no Peter's proclamation was an instrument yes true but what convinced them it is the Holy Spirit that came upon them 5,000 people received the anointing that's why they were convinced and convicted that there is salvation in the name of Jesus Christ that's why you know Paul says nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit today I need the power of the Holy Spirit this Pentecost as we prepare for the season of Pentecost for the feast of Pentecost brothers and sisters let's pray let the anointing of the Holy Spirit convict us and convince us that there is salvation only in Jesus Christ yes we all believe that but we need to be sustained in that relationship every day the world is still in the grip of Satan every day the world is trying to distract us from this faith take us away from this faith dilute the faith in us it's a spiritual warfare going on so it's not just you know don't think by our own efforts we can sustain the faith in Jesus Christ it's difficult we will fail we need the power of the Holy Spirit that's why this anointing of the Holy Spirit is important primarily to make me understand that there is salvation only in Jesus Christ and to sustain me in that faith let's pray for that in a very special way let's all pray for a moment Heavenly Father we thank you for giving us this wonderful grace to understand one convicting us and convincing us and confirming and really strengthening us in believing that there is salvation only in Jesus Christ today we understood what do you mean by salvation what is the entire you know um, drama that unfolded in the salvic history we are convinced about it through the Holy Spirit but we need to be sustained in this faith we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit so continue to anoint us Lord continue to stir up the spirit in every one of us so that we may be sustained in our faith in Jesus Christ and continue to believe that we need the salvic power of God every moment of our life we need the Savior Jesus Christ every moment of our life and till our eternal journey ends in your beatific vision Mary your mother be with us and intercede for us as you were with the apostles in the upper room pray for us mother that we may be sustained in this faith of the Holy Spirit Heavenly Father we make this prayer in the mighty and matchless name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ Amen Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen God bless you all thank you very much and have a wonderful day God bless you all